All right, people, RK people of God, I want to share some things. Uh, one of the things I want to definitely encourage you to do is that there were two videos that I did, you know, with all of them, you know, that the Lord put on my heart to do, uh, or I was stirred in my spirit to do. Uh, definitely please, you know, take time to share them, especially, you know, in this particular season, what we're seeing and what I'm kind of address, you know, briefly, you know, today is about this sexual morality amongst leadership. Uh, adultery and leadership, um, you know, silly women, you know, calling people their Jesus or whatever. And these false prophets that are out here roaming around that can't even keep their marriage together and are getting beat up on social media by their wives and stuff. So I want to uh, encourage you, especially in this time, to uh, really share, you know, uh, the particular videos that I did, the one about um, adultery and leadership. I think I, it was called adultery and leadership adultery in the church and suicide there was part one there was another there's a second one adultery in the church you know amongst leadership or whatever uh take the time and please please you know share those you know those videos and i'm not saying that for me to, to push my you know myself out there i could care less about any kind of notoriety whatever my heart and my 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 passion is to help people is to see people not you know, a fall prey to the deceptions that are out there, to the seductions that are out there, to the flowery and fluffy words um, that are out there. OK, so I, I want to uh, share these, you know, uh, want you to, you know, share those videos for the simple fact that we're seeing this whole thing with William Murphy, with, with Joshua Holmes and others like them, because there are going to be others that's going to be, you know, coming out and the, the covers are going to be, you know, removed off of them and everything. But people, again, and I'm trying not to go over some of the same stuff I shared on the other two videos because the information that the Lord gave me uh, uh, to share uh, was very, very, you know, I had to sit back and listen, listen to him again because it helps sharpen us with the word of God. Okay. Um, I heard a, a bishop say something, uh, uh, or the man of God say something one time. He says, authority, the authority is, is, is what we, what we rely on. You know, the word of God is our authority. Okay. The Lord Jesus Christ, the father is our authority, but he said influence oftentimes will override, excuse me, influence will oftentimes override authority. And that's, that's something. When you look at, you know, what God said in the book, in the, in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, what he told Adam, you know, not to eat of. He told, and Adam, you know, communicated Eve. Adam and Eve know, both knew not to eat of a certain tree. But because of Satan's influence, that overrode the authority of God. What God said that influence of that serpent was able to seduce Eve to do the same thing, to 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 uh, to override what God said. Then Eve influences Adam. Adam goes ahead, goes along with it, and they both did not hold on to the authority of of the Word of God. Same thing when we have people in churches. Okay, our church, you know, our, excuse me, as as Christians, the authority is the Word of God. The authority is the word of God. And what happens nowadays is that uh, because of a person's charisma, because of a person's influence, their celebrity status, you know, in the pulpit, in churches, whatever, in the gospel music industry, their influence will cause people and seduce people to ignore the word of God and accept what that person's doing, that person's behavior and that person's actions. All right. And again, I make this statement all the time. I'm not talking about every minister. I'm not talking about every pastor. I'm not talking about every apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher. I'm not talking about every. I'm talking about the ones that are doing this stuff. And it is a shame that people, you know, will always say, oh, we just got to show mercy. We just got to show this. They completely ignore what the word of God says <laughs> because they like the celebrity status of their preacher. They like the celebrity status of these, you know, false prophets. They like the celebrity status and the momentum and the money that they bring in and the, and the and how big their church is and how much they got, how much their church does things in the community, and everything, how big it is, how glamorous it is and how much, you know, how many, you know, movie stars or celebrity visit their ministries or whatever and how much they can pack out a house when they show up in a town. They will rather have that than have what the authority of the word of God says.
influence overriding authority. Okay. And I say that because when you see, you know, these ministers and bishops, we know the word of God says when selecting an elder or a bishop, let him be blameless. OK, let him be blameless. But, you know, uh, when you have someone that's been covering up their, you know, uh, illegitimate, you know, child for the past several years and everything or someone that, you know, is doing, you know, uh, social media recordings live and and uh, they are, you know, attacked by their own wife and get divorced and marry somebody else that can't keep their own marriage together. And uh, when you see things like this. You still have people that are going to come to their aid to support them, to encourage them to continue to go. OK, now this is the thing, people. Again, like I said, when someone does this, when someone is involved in sex and morality and adultery, when they're greedy and they're covetous. See, one thing about being covetous is that it's not just, you know, you know, financial money covetous, but covetous is also going after another man's wife. Covetous is also going after, you know, the men in the church or the women in the church, you know, and, and having sexual affairs with them because lust is never satisfied. It's always going to want more. It's always going to want something that it's not supposed to have. All right. And then you got this whole lying spirit that's roaming through certain ministries and stuff to where a person who whose lifestyle is not even in order, whose household is not even in order. They're standing before people across the pulpit. And they're 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 basically lying to them because they don't even apply the word of God to their own life. And again, a lie, when it is being used or when it's being presented, it is always I'll say this in most cases, the design is to, for the if for the person that's pro, promoting the lie or pushing the lie to benefit from the fruits of that lie. Benefit from the manipulation of that lie. Benefit from the agenda that that lie is trying to uh, to accomplish. The person who's doing the lying and who's doing those things, they're trying to benefit. They're trying to reap a benefit from those lies. Okay. So when we look at these things, people, and even though, you know, someone may come up and, you know, repent and everything, they've been lying. And you cannot trust someone that's been lying to the face of the people of God for the last, you know, five, six, seven years. You cannot sit up here and support and remain under a leader or anyone or, or, or yield to anyone that is a manipulator. You know, this Joshua Holmes guy is a manipulator, covetous. OK, and so many women are calling me, you know, Jesus in the flesh and everything. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I love what um, Fine Truth 88 said, you know. Uh, you know, take a chance to visit his channel because he, he really, you know, focus on, listen, focus on the word of God. Quit being deceived. You know, uh, his name is Fine Truth 88. I believe his name is Brother Marcus. So, and he said something very key. You know, he said one of the signs that Jesus Christ mentioned prior to his return, he said, take heed that no man deceives you. There, he said one of the first signs was there are going to be many that come in my name that say they are the Christ, which means the anointed one, false prophets. Okay. And for some reason, people are ignoring, you know, this stuff that's being pushed through our social media. They are ignoring these false prophets and don't even realize how close the return of the Lord is because there are many false prophets arising. There are many people that are claiming that they are anointed heir of Christ, okay? Deceiving the households of silly women that are following people like Joshua Holmes, all right? These women, you know, possibly no father figure in their life. Same women are, are, are desiring a husband, desiring a man and everything, and they don't think they're ever going to get one and stuff, and they're not taking the time to correct areas of their life so they can quit being deceived, manipulated, and now when you yoke up with this guy that's doing this stuff, then you understand that's a spirit that this guy is operating out of. It's a demon spirit because it's manipulating, seducing and deceiving multitudes of women. What is he doing? He's doing like a spiritual Jim Jones and people are still following. him. There's no scripture to support what this guy Joshua Holmes is doing. No scripture to support it. Gold microphone, you know. Uh, outfits looking like, you know, from uh, uh, Michael Jackson, uh, we are the world, we, you know, whatever. 
just things that you see blatantly. You know him, Manasseh Jordan. You see these guys and stuff. Bishop, you know, but well, not Bishop, but Bernard Jordan. You see these guys out here. You see the stuff that, you know, but the Brian Carnes and did and stuff. And these things to start coming up. And like I said, I don't, you know, don't jump on the gun. The, the moment a report comes out about somebody and don't just jump on it. Oh, yeah, they did it. They did it. No, you take time and, 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 and watch the fruits of it and watch the, 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 the story play out. You know, some of the things that I deal with, you know, in my line of work in the social work field. And I work with a lot of fathers that are trying to restore their relationship back with their children and get their children out of the uh, Department of Child Services. One of the things that I always tell these men, okay, and families, is that you can you can lie, you know, for so long, but all the things because I'm not around you 24 seven. I'm going to tell you the right thing, and hopefully that you take the heed to my advice so we can navigate through this whole you know child protective service process, whatever. But one of the things I always tell them is that listen. You can hide the you can hide the, the the truth of your whole issue for so long, but it's going to come out, and you can sneak around and visit the baby mother and see your child unsupervised when you know the court orders say, don't do it. You can sneak around and do it all you like, but the moment something goes wrong, the moment that it looks like that you are uh, as a father, and I'm talking about from my you know my my uh, uh, my career you know standpoint, the moment. You as a father start gaining momentum and getting close to your child being returned home to you instead of the mother, it's going to blow up because the moment things don't go right for that other party, you're going to get exposed. See, because as long as you all are on the same plane, as long as you all are going through the same issues, whatever, everybody's fine. You're slick over here. You, you're seeing her, you know, unsup you're seeing your child unsupervised. You're, see you're going against the court orders and everything. And I've had this happen with case after case after case of every father that did not listen to what I told them. The moment you continue to practice a lie, sooner or later, somebody's going to get upset. And that's when the truth is going to come out. And I had a father, uh, we went to court one time and he sat up there and I kept telling him, man, quit, quit going to see your baby mother. Don't let her see your child because the court order said this, 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 and that. We go to court, the, the, uh, the, my uh, uh, client's attorney said, hey, you know what, we're going to go ahead and give you custody of your child. And the client was like, yeah, you know, he thought he got away, but the, bi the biological mother was right there. She said, wait a minute, what you mean he getting full custody? And I just said that. I was like, here we go. And so the, the attorney said, well, you know, we giving him full custody. She said, and the mother said, no, you're not. And the attorney said, well, how do you know we're not? She said, because he's been bringing her to see me and stay the night in the hotel with me the whole time. It blew up right in his face. That's what I'm talking about with this whole, with, with, with lying, okay? With lying and being, being deceitful. It's going to come out. It's going to expose you. All right. And these things with these false prophets and these bishops and everything that are doing this stuff and and committing these acts and stuff, you know, they're going over years after years after years, hiding things under the rug. So the whole time while they're doing this stuff, they're still up here preaching and teaching while they're sleeping with people in the congregation, while they're cheating on their wife, while the wife is sleeping with some other man or whatever. And they're doing this stuff. They are living a lie. They're hypocrites. And you cannot trust someone to be a leader in a particular ministry that's leading a double life. They're one way in the pulpit, one way in the congregation, one way in leadership. Outside in the world, they know the acts of sin that they're committing. They know that they are doing opposite of what the word of God is saying. But because of their influence, because of their charisma, their gospel sales, their lifestyle, the money that they bring in, because of all those things, their influence is able to seduce the people in that congregation, many of whom don't have any discernment, many of whom God has shown them in dreams what this person is. And they ignore it because they like their whole their soul is tied to that church. OK, they created a soul tie so much so that they you can tell them, listen. If you go and you continue in this ministry and stuff, this is going to have a spiritual negative impact on you and your household. They ignore it.
And because of lack of discernment, because of not listening to the warnings of God, they continue on supporting that person that's involved in sexual morality, that's involved in, in, in covetousness, that's involved in lying and seducing people and, and, and women and everything. They continue on to support them because the word of God is not their authority anymore. That man in the flesh is. That man's influence in the flesh is, or that woman's influence in the flesh is. All right. I want to read something to you in, in Ezekiel chapter 34. It says this there. And, and please, people also remember the book of Jude. Take time to read the book of Jude, because these people that are getting away with stuff. And I know this whole thing, William Murphy supposedly came out and said, you know, what was going on and stuff and try to, you know, make amends. And, and look here again, as a person, uh, uh, if a person truly repents and everything, yes, you know, we're to restore people and everything. But I'll tell you this, they're not supposed to be in leadership either. Did not to be repentance don't mean that you just remain in in leadership. Remember what happened with, with Bill Clinton? Okay, when he got caught and lied about it, living a lie, cheating on his wife. All right, impeachment. Okay, because the, again, leadership is the key to anything remaining out or allowed to come in in a particular ministry or a nation. All right. When we see what happened with Obama, when he started making June gay, National Gay Pride Month, decorated the white, they had the White House decorated in rainbow colors for the LGBT, whatever. Look at what, what look at the floodgates, how they just burst it open and look at all the immorality and stuff that has taken place. Christians losing their businesses because they don't want bake cakes for a, a, a gay pride, you know, wedding, whatever. So look at what happened. The floodgates, you know, are open. All because of that. The same thing is even in church and stuff. When a pastor or a leader is caught in sexual immorality. One thing that happens is that their wife will hold that over their head and that stuff. And that wife will use that as a reason. You know, if they're in ministry together, will use that as a reason to, uh, to, 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 to boss that man around. See, some men, when they get caught up in this stuff and they do things wrong, they have a history of doing their wife wrong over a period of years. What they will do is that they will yield to anything that their wife says because they still carry that guilt and that condemnation on them. And so that wife can manipulate the ministry behind the scenes, okay? And push the feminist woman uh, agenda, putting the woman up in front of everybody, putting the woman up in front of or over everything in leadership, okay? And that's what happens sometimes in, in, in certain ministries because of the guilt of that husband, because of what he's done, okay? But on this particular, you know, uh, 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 thing we want to look at, is that when leadership are involved in this stuff and immorality, okay? And even though they come out and repent and everything like that, you've been doing this for several years. It was held on the cover for several years. So that lets us know that you've been a manipulator and a liar and a hypocrite for seven years and nobody could detect it. Well, I, like I said before, God will show you. God will reveal things to you in dreams. He will send the word to you. He will show you. And even with the discernment, somebody blaming some just ain't right. Some don't feel right, whatever. Somebody knows. But see, sometimes people try to do that damage control, which means that, you know, before the actual truth of the story come out, they try to hurry up and present themselves before the actual facts of that particular story or event comes out. Because it's almost like the people will believe the first story rather than the facts. Okay. Then sit back and wait for the facts to come out. Okay. So anyway, and I don't, you know, one of the things I try not to do and make sure not to do is just to jump on something the first time or some kind of story, some kind of event or some kind of account comes out or an accusation comes out. I believe in, in, in sitting back and letting things, you know, manifest on their own and stuff. And the truth is going to eventually, you know, uh, come out. But what we, what I'm addressing right now, I'm, I'm so sorry about that, is a pattern that, that, that I'm, that I'm seeing. And that is that people, no matter what someone has done, no matter how much they've defiled the house of God, no matter how much they defiled somebody else's life with immorality. OK, these guys are, are sleeping with these women and stuff and they having children out of wedlock. Those demon spirits of lust and perversion have an open assignment now to attack that child and manifest through that child when they get older. See, people don't understand the spiritual ramifications and consequences that take place. Excuse me that take place when they get involved in sexual morality, okay? 
So when these people are sleeping with these women and doing all these things, they're not marrying them. Okay. They're good enough to sleep with, but not good enough to marry. Again, these kind creep into the household of silly women who are burdened with lust and sins. All right. So when we see things like this, people, this is the kind of stuff that we have got to warn and we have got to judge according to the word of God. No man is above the word of God. The authority that we have in believers is in the Holy Spirit being born again in Jesus Christ and the word of God. They overcame them. We will come to the devil by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. OK, we use the word of God, the sword of the spirit. All right. We use the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. And we have to use that. And everybody has to be, it has to be held accountable to the word. See, when the apostle Paul addressed that, see, this is what happens when people get caught up in sin. They get caught up in uh, immorality and they know they're not supposed to be doing it as leaders. They tend to twist certain things in the scriptures. They try to, tend, uh, you know, twist it. Well, David did this and everything. Okay, is David Jesus Christ? What did the Lord tell you how to live? How did the Lord God tell you how to live? What was the consequences that David had to face? The whole world is reading about David's sins. Is that what you want? The whole world to know your sins and stuff? And and and, and listen, don't go that way. This is what this guy did. He didn't had a child out of wetlock and stuff for seven years and hid it. You know? And then they try to take Paul where well, Paul said he was the chiefest of sinners and, and everything. All have sinned and fallen short to the glory of God. All that is prior to salvation, people. That's before someone receives Christ. Paul would, did not remain a murderer. He was not up there murdering people while preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Okay? So one thing they won't quote is 1 Corinthians chapter 5. When they get up there and try to give excuses and try to say and try to get a, a woe is me, y'all feel sorry for me because my father wasn't there because this happened in my life and everything. You are in leadership. You are held at a higher accountability because you are in leadership. You're in front of people. You're supposed to be God's spokesperson to the people and feed the people of God, the word of God. You can't feed them when you're living a hypocritical lifestyle. You can't feed them anything but lies and deception because you are blaspheming the word of God. Now, the word of God is true. A child can read the word of God and stuff and, and, and preach it by just reading the scriptures. OK, so let's get let's not get 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 uh, uh, deceived by just because someone can eloquently, you know, speak uh, uh, scriptures and stuff. And and they went through seminary, you know, school and everything. They know how to uh, 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 dissect the word of God and stuff. You've got to look at their fruits, look at their character, people. I tell my children that all the time. Don't go off with somebody say with their mouth about being born again, whatever. Look at their lifestyle. I'm going to show you something. Ezekiel chapter 34, therefore ye shepherds, this is verse seven, therefore ye shepherds hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey. How do they become a prey? You know, in churches, when leadership gets involved in sexual morality, when the roles are reversed in leadership, when you got, you know, uh, women over, over men and everything and stuff, you got pastors cheating on their wives, you got, you know, these false prophets, you know, releasing, you know, false prophetic words or whatever. You're opening the door to, for demon spirits to cause that church to be stagnant. You're opening the door for leap, for unclean demon spirits to, to come in and attack the people of God. Because the leadership has given them those spirits open permission because their lifestyle is off. All right. They became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. The shepherds benefited from the substance of the people of God. Now, in this particular context, all right, we know that this is dealing with the Pharisees, okay? This is going to be dealing, you know, with, with um, this is what we see out of the Pharisees, all right? They gave the people the law and everything, but they could not heal nobody. They could not deliver nobody. They could not protect them spiritually because all they kept dealing with was the law. It wasn't until Jesus Christ came and started setting people free and it started showing them, listen, yo, 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 your, uh, your enemies are not, you know, the, the, uh, so much, you know, where your, 
Your bigger issue is the devil and demon spirits. Jesus Christ was showing them exactly the spirit that was behind a lot of their affliction and oppression that those people, that the people of God were facing. Okay. Because God says, I will raise up shepherds after my own heart. They will tend to my flock. They will deliver my flock. They will not allow them to be taken advantage of. Okay. So anyway, it says, therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat for them. So notice he says, I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to seek to cease from feeding the flock, meaning God says, remove them. He's going to remove those shepherds that are taking advantage of his people, that are taking advantage of the people of God, that are doing these things, that are being in leadership and stuff, and they're, they're, they're sleeping around with other people in the ministry, they're sleeping around with other women and stuff, taking advantage of them. Why? Because those particular leaders have the title of a bishop, apostle, apostle, prophet, evangelist, a teacher. They have that, that title on them. And so that title also connects to their influence that they have on somebody else's life. And they take advantage of them. They know these women want a man, want a husband. They take advantage of that. All right. Joshua Holmes, I mean, the majority of his ministry are from people that wear high heels. Takes advantage of them. Because those women are going to give, okay? And any man that is sitting up under that 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 uh, uh, that false prophet that's embracing them, that man, too, is covetous as well. Because you cannot sit up here and read the word of God, see what this guy is doing, and support it. There's no way in the world, but his influence is overriding the authority. William Murphy's influence is overriding the authority. They twist the scriptures, people. They got to twist the scriptures. They're not going to touch on sexual immorality. Remember, like I said before, sometimes these leaders, sometimes, and I'm not talking about every leader, I'm talking about the ones that I'm talking about and those that are like them. They won't touch on certain things in the word of God because that will mean they got to sit down. And this stuff, it, 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 it frustrates and it angers me. Deceive so many people get deceived and become naive because a person is standing across a pulpit. Yes, you respect and you honor your leadership, but you don't support people when they're doing immoral things, doing ungodly things, and not living according to the word of God, but then telling you to live according to the word of God. It's hypocrisy, people, and you cannot support it. Get out of those places. Love you. In Jesus' name.